everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm reviewing season two, episode two. Dirty John Betty. Let's get into the craziness. This episode basically shows the highlights on how Betty was raised by her parents and the different events of Betty and Dan's relationship. During her marriage with Dan, she has suffered um, difficult pregnancies. They are showing you the trial of people testifying in court while showing her history at the same time. The mother and daughter relationship between Betty to me wasn't good because when she got her menstrual cycle, she had to leave school during her rifle training. When Betty got home, her mother asked her why she was there. And Betty didn't know the reason why she was there. The, when uh, the mom actually saw the reason why, the mother actually took Betty to the bathroom. She don't even say anything to her. She closed the door, pushed her in the door, bathroom, and closed the door. And Betty actually finds out, not knowing what it is, that she got her menstrual cycle. The mother comes back with a pad and tell her house to put it on. And Betty is like just standing there late. You're not going to tell me what is going on, why my clothes is bloody. And at this point, the mother don't even give her changing clothes. She just give her a pad. She don't, tell, she don't give her a towel to tell her to take her clothes off to get into a shower and put on changing clothes. I'm like, this is crazy right now. Because I'm like, they teaching the girls how to shoot rifles, but they're not teaching them about sex ed, about the female anatomy and how it works. I cannot right now. And as a mother, it was her duty to sit her down and explain to her what was going on with her body. Just, just giving her a pad and, and, and just saying, hey, Betty is now at the table and is about to receive the last silverware set. And the father comes at her and calling her a slut because there are boys calling the phone. And then the mother joins in and they both tag team on her about being a slut because the boys are calling the phone. I like OMG. Instead of the mother taking her side and saying, hey, she probably not a slut. This is what kids do. They call on the line and play on your phone. And the boys probably know that her parents don't like that. And they doing it anyway to get her in trouble. I was like, I didn't like that either. I'm like, these parents are crazy. Ugh. Betty is a college student at this point. And this is where she meets Dan. And this is where you first see Dan throwing, a, throwing around his title. He comes over to Betty with his little pickup line. And writes on a tablecloth, Daniel T. Barwick the third, MDA. She giggles and she like, what is MDA? Okay. He like medical doctor almost. I like almost don't even count, first of all. This is where Dan is actually late for um a date with Betty, and Betty is about to leave. He runs across the street calling her. And he apologizes, but never gives an explanation to why he was late. And then asks Betty, oh, you really was going to leave? And she says, yes. Uh, what he expect? You late to a date and you don't expect her to leave? Because she thought he wasn't going to even show at all. And I'm like, first of all, if you're going to have a date with somebody, you don't be late. You should be the first one to be there. To receive them when they arrive and greet them. And if you're going to have a date, you should make it on a date when you're not busy or doing anything. If you're going to have a date, like, who does that? I mean, people does it. But you should be free and available when you're, like, making d date plans and stuff like that. I actually believe Dan was standing across the street watching Betty that whole time when she was about to leave. Then when he realized she was about to leave, he's coming over across the street. I don't know. But that's the feeling I get about Dan. He was just like right there the whole time. But why? I don't know. This is the time where they showing during um, different events of them dating. And they starts out where uh, this is where they is at 
a diner. Basically, she reading a feminist, and he comes in and asks her why she reading that. And she like, because somebody left her on the train, and she was curious about Gloria Steyn, who, who's a feminist. And she was actually curious what she was about, and what she wanted, what was her message that she was trying to send to people. And the music comes on, and then they dance. Then it goes into... Then it goes to them at a diner where Betty is reading a letter from Dan that he wrote saying that she's perfect and uh how -huh, he want her to be his wife. And then it goes into where they're at the bar and Dan is wasted. So he asks Betty to marry her. And she don't want to get married. She don't say no, but she want to wait until she graduate. And then Dan does the turtle. He gets on the floor and does the turtle and alligator. I'm like, OMG. And I think this is what happened in season, I mean, in episode one. You see her on the bed, like, wasted, doing the turtle. When, before she calls Dan on the phone. This is where this ties into. Where she get the turtle from. It's actually their wedding day and they're about to get married. The mother is fussing with Betty. Not to marry him because he is not in morning dress. And which morning dress is a formal uh, like tuxedo. And he was in a suit. Girl. Betty mother was not having it. <laughs> and she like, if he willing to break a promise, and he said, she said he promised. He promised. And he like, if he willing to do this, no telling what he would do. So, this was Betty first warning not to marry Dan. Okay? And she's right. If a person is willing to break their promise, then all you got is your word. If you don't got anything else in this world, you got your word. And if you can't keep your word, then I don't know what to tell you, child. I don't know what to tell you. It is the wedding night and the next day. Betty thinking they're going to go sightseeing. They're going to get out the room. And room service is going to come clean up the bed. And this is where you see the first sign of Dan being controlling. He took it upon himself not to even have a conversation with Betty to cancel room service so they could spend a, the whole day in, in the, 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 the hotel room and then expect her to make up the bed. I like, Dan is crazy. I like, this is my honeymoon and you expect me to make up a bed where somebody is getting paid to do that? Oh no, I don't think so. It's my day as well and I want to get pampered. Okay, I I like why he couldn't make up the bed. Oh, no, he didn't. I said, Dan is crazy. Yes, he is. <laughs> and he expect me to make up a bed during my, my wedding. Oh, no, we would not be having that. <laughs> Betty actually looked shocked when he said that. But she didn't say nothing, though. Now they're showing that they're married now. I guess Dan is doing residency and, um... Betty gets pregnant with her first child, and they in the car where Dan told me he's going to pick up more shifts, and Betty says no. She could get a job doing Tupperware salesperson, and she does that, and they could, um, they talk about, um, tighten up on things so they can make it. Betty is working, coming home, doing her wifely duties, and... Taking care of her man. The next day, she's taking care of the baby. She had the blood is coming down her leg, so she had to go to the hospital, and she actually had a miscarriage, which I know that was really tough. That's showing the first signs of her having a difficult pregnancy. So Betty is now playing with the baby, having a conversation with Dan, and Dan is more focused on. His doctor lab coat than what Betty is saying. She trying to tell him what the mother has sent her. And he talking about ordering two more, two more white coats knowing they can't afford it. And telling her that we have to tighten up and, and, and move things around in the finance and stuff like that. 
I like he's more into his image than more concerned about an image than his well being of his wife, which is ridiculous. And then Dan makes more continue to make decisions without his wife. He talks to Betty about being miserable and, and being a, a, a residency of being a doctor. And he makes a decision that he want to be a lawyer now. He already made the decision to enroll in law school. By out first talking it over with his wife. He making mad decisions without including his wife, which is very selfish. Because now they have to uproot to another state. And he's not even thinking about the well-being of his children or his wife at this moment. He's just doing things. Just be, because he can. Now he's going to uproot his entire family to Boston. Now the family's in Boston. Now Dan is complaining about the Kylie's being privileged and, oh, this is what my dad does. I'm this, I'm that. And using their titles. Ale, what is he complaining about? He does the same exact thing. He complaining about the very exact thing that he does. So I'm confused. I, like, that is so ridiculous. I don't get it. <laughs> Betty asked him, how can he stand out? I said, Betty is a good wife. Child, cause she being supportive. And he don't ask her how her day is. He's not involved with the children. Oh, no. And she still comes up to be his support system. I like, that's a good word right there. It comes out that Betty is pregnant again, and she this time she want to get an abortion because she complaining that her pregnancy are difficult. She get hemorrhage, and it makes her really, really sick. And Dan trying to convince her to have the baby, talking about he is gonna be there. Betty is, is like, no, you not, cause I'm not gonna. You are never here, and like I have no one to help me, basically. And she decides to keep the baby. So she's on the phone with Dan. And then she begins to have pain once again. She calls for help. She goes to the hospital. And she lost the whole baby. The baby had died. I was like, oh my God. My heart fills and goes out. Because I know that's sad. To carry a whole baby... And then you lose the baby? That's a terrible feeling. Oh my God. Terrible. Dan actually gets hired for a law firm. This is when they in California. And actually buys a house. When they have three children already. Uh, a cookout in their backyard. Where they invite the um, people over. They think she's a good interior decorator. They actually... um. Betty is actually at the table, sitting down with the um, wives, and they want her to be in charge of the gala because she's so great of, um, of interior decorating. They want her to be in charge of the whole gala, which is impressive. So, uh, clearly, Betty is likable, talented, and very smart because it seems like people like her. And... They're at the gala at this point, and and um, Betty actually sees her friend like in like destroyed and everything, but she don't actually go over there to her to see if she's all right. And then when they get home, Dan actually tells her that the friend that she saw at the gala, husband, is actually leaving the firm company, and. Then she had the flashback to her friend being destroyed and everything. Like, that could have been the reason why she was so, um, so sad. Dan wants to begin his own law firm practice. So the next day, they in the office, and Dan is actually freaking out about getting a loan. And, oh, this is not going to work. And Betty is, like, his supporter, his motivator. She's encouraging like, if you've been through so much, you could go through this and you would even be better than you was before. And then, she's pregnant again. Betty is at the hospital and this time, she, she really, she can't do no more pregnancy. 
She's talking to Dan and Dan not even listening. He just reading his law paper. And she want this to be the last baby. And she want to get her two times. And Dan actually agrees because I don't really think he care. His mind is really somewhere else. I think he mad because that doctor had her sign those papers and really probably can't sue him. Wait, because she was in the office and she, that doctor made sure she signed all kind of paperwork. When he heard the, the name Broderick, what? That doctor was not playing. <laughs> he was not. That doctor was not playing. The lady is talking, Betty. Betty friend is actually talking to her and realize that her husband been cheating. I said if her husband been cheating and Betty husband been hanging out with that man, I said it ain't too far off that Dan is probably cheating. What they say, two birds of a feather flock together, child. He was giving their testimony on the day of the murder. Betty Broderick finally realized Dan Broderick was dead when she was in the interrogator room and realized he wasn't coming back and couldn't believe that one bullet killed this man. My final thoughts is Dan was so more in love of the sound of being a doctor than actually being a doctor. Does Dan have a right to say he's a doctor if he is not practicing? Before um, Betty met Dan and during the relationship, Betty seemed like a smart, popular person who people liked and seemed relatable to. And it's like when she got involved with Dan, she probably went crazy during his relationship. And I say, anybody that's in a relationship... If your relationship is that bad and you thinking about picking up a weapon, I recommend you leave and get out of that relationship so you won't be a Betty Broderick. And I put God above everyone and everything. I'm out. See you.